Hello, I uh, was thinking on the subject of virtue and communication. Now we would hope that, that we are rational beings and that we try to do the right thing. Okay, we try to do our duty by our nation, by our own morality. Okay, and Barack Obama is not being a bad president. Let me put two things um, from an international perspective anyway. Of course, Americans themselves are suffering at the moment, um, but they were suffering under Bush as well. Um, Barack Obama fundamentally changed American policy towards Russia, um, who said they would attack the missile defense shield, which um, was a virtue. He was brave enough to admit that America couldn't possibly defend those uh, missile defense shields uh, sites against Russian attack and so he therefore went to renegotiate and of course that averted World War Three and everything else okay uh, pos possible conflict with Russia probably not World War Three but anyway it's the communication uh, the substance of Barack Obama can't be really be seen because of course he he is such a good communicator in the way of in presenting an, an image, right? And that image is 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 an image of public relations, right? And public relations comes from uh, the the subject of psychoanalysis, okay? And this, in in a sense, is democracy's. Um, do, do, like democracy's Achilles heel, right? Now I'm not saying I'm against democracy, okay? But the psychoanalysis tries to get people to do things coercively, okay? To bypass um, democracy. And I'll give you an example. Psychoanalysts had a look at uh, a study for industry, okay? that people usually went and bought a, um, a washing machine or a TV every five years. So they said to industry, we, we will, we will um, convince people to go and buy one every 18, 18 months. Okay? And the way they did that was to put in built-in redundancy into machines. Machines and devices t to make um, computers or TVs or other things break quicker and that's why you have to get a washing machine every so often because it, it, it's not designed to last you know even though it's made of durable materials okay now this by this way they package to sell someone in this way means that Barack Obama comes out with with seemingly rational um, things to say Let's look at the two most popular. Change we can believe in. But that could have been on the outside of a baked bean tin. Okay? Change we can believe in. What's, what's, what is significant about change? Change can be good or bad. Okay? Let's take another thing. Audacity to hope. Have you ever heard a more nihilistic, that means without meaning, all right, statement in your life? We now have to have audacity to hope. All right. Audacity means to strive, to persevere, and now hope is something that was not necessarily without. Was was one word that didn't require any work to do. Anyone can hope for something. You know, I could hope to win the lottery. All right. But when you're talking about things such as wars. Banks being run by gangsters, basically, facing against, um, off against uh, feudalistic families such as bin, the Bin Ladens, who are more powerful than countries. Okay. Um, but so the stakes are grave. All right. But let's let's get past all that. All right. No matter what the what sort of perverted shit the Bin Ladens are and do. Okay. You know, bombing places, being involved in in trafficking of people, 
all right, for basically white slavery or slavery, um, drug running, you know, mass 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 murder, holding onto um, the uh, holding the oil industry by ransom because they own oil companies, construction companies, banks. But let's get past all that, okay? We're, we're looking for virtue, all right, in our in our um, in our in our society, a lot's been talked about, especially on YouTube and on on, on what what constitutes virtue. All right, are we even really ready for someone who's like a philosopher king? Okay, and I use the term king loosely because I am a republican um, in the purest sense of the world word. Okay. Um, in many ways, in Britain, the, the the royal family is basically just figureheads. Okay, so in that sense, we are sort of a crown republic. All right, Americans don't like the word word king, but I use the word philosopher king in the in the terms that Marcus Aurelius. All right, he was a character in Gladiator, but also a real person. Okay, he had complete power over the Roman Empire. He could have had everyone's head chopped off if he got sufficiently angry, so he didn't. He had discipline. He had self-discipline. He could have had all the money in the world, but he didn't. Okay. But are we really ready for that, or are we looking for somebody who's more like Barack Obama, who says these things? And it must be frustrating for him because he has a he has taught law. He doesn't just have a degree in law. He has he's taught law, and yet he he's constrained within these things. Okay. What George Bush was seen as a buffoon. All right, he had an average intelligence for a, a European person, all right, person of European descent. But will we ever really know what George Bush felt like or wanted to do, wanted to do? A key example of this, right, is I basically I hate a lot of Tories. I well, I don't I dislike Tories, all right, because they whenever they get into power they rob out the the uh, the pension funds destroy the trade unions and asset strip companies and sell off the capital to anyone who will buy it. And also they have no principles. They gave uh, money and weapons to uh, the ANC who uh, they were calling at the same time as they were doing it. Um, um, Marxist terrorists, well they were selling them arms. Okay, but a conservative... Um, one nation conservative who was part of the Tory party was John Major and when he was actually speaking on the subject of, of, of virtues and what he wanted to do it became clear that he, uh, most of the things he wanted to do could never he could never happen so if we did have a, someone who was like Marcus Aurelius who was so disciplined all right um, or someone like um, Epiricus, who was a slave, but also believed in Stoic philosophy, and so those two, those two men, Marcus Aurelius and Epiricus, were re, would really be intellectual um, uh, equals in the sense, despite their, their differences. And isn't that the key? Instead of us being slavish sheep to PR and for us to be analysed and our views to be plastic, plastically moulded to suit a candidate, and that candidate being plastically mild it's all a lie okay it's a lie and we have to get past this we're not really prepared though right even as rational beings ourselves for what that philosopher king in a sense might might tell us that philosopher